everybody. Uh, I'm Legolover117, or Garrett, whatever you prefer to call me. They're both my names at this point. I guess that's my new intro. I've said that in, like, every vlog since I revealed what my real name was, so I guess that's my new intro. Today is an interesting video because, if you recall last year, when I took a bit of a break from uploading uh, from January to around April of 2018. Apologies, she's very loud and obnoxious. As I was saying, when I took that break last year, I vlogged a good majority of what I was doing on that break. I think I called it uh, what I was doing while I was dead. And I figured, you know what, why not do that again? Because I like making content. Uh, I'm not gonna be uploading for the majority of 2020, or the first half, well, not even the first half, the first like, quarter of 2020, I think, because I probably won't be uploading again until April again this year, which sucks. I know you guys like my content and all that, but I just don't have a lot of it done right now. So I figured, hey, why not do another vlog journal Thing. I'm really more inspired to do this by a YouTuber known as Jeremy Johns. Uh, he does these like monthly journal vlog things where he catalogs every single day of a specific month and he did that all last year and I really like that series of videos. I like making those kinds of videos so I figured why not do one for myself except this is cataloging several months and I won't be doing this for every month. Uh, so, Jeremy, I'm not ripping you off or anything. I just thought I'd try it for myself. So what's today? Today is January the 4th. Tonight, I'm supposed to see Hope again. We're gonna go out, have a nice dinner, and see Rise of Skywalker for a second time. I liked the movie. I liked it quite a bit when I first saw it, but I think after a second viewing, it'll really cement my opinions on it. Uh, I don't think it'll change in my top 10 films of the year ranking. It's number three. You have no concept of personal space, do you? Look what you did to your face. Look what you did to your face. Look at that. Also, I'm watching uh, Good Luck Charlie on Disney Plus right now. It's kind of the show I'm currently investing a lot of my time in. And I gotta say, it's still really good. Like, this was one of Disney's last good live action series, like for all ages. It's not just for kids, it's not just for adults, it's for everyone. Everyone can enjoy it, and it's, it's fun, it's family friendly, and uh, it's great. It's made for kids, as YouTube would require me to say. And I'm sure Emmett will live up to his promise of not being a slob. You know what they say, people change. Yeah, well, I'm not sure that's true. Or is it that people never change? So I just beat another level on cars for Game Boy Advance. I beat um, this here, Ornament Valley to Willie's Butte, and uh, it unlocked a few other things. I got a Piston Cup race I can do, as well as a King's Challenge, and a Circuit Race. Uh, but I can confidently say that this is the worst port of the Cars video game. Uh, it's, its controls are wonky, it's an isometric racer, so it just doesn't look good at all. It's even worse than the DS port, which previously I thought was the worst port of the game. And considering the fact that I own every single port of the Cars video game, I think I would know what I'm talking about. And uh, the Game Boy Advance port is horrible. <laughs> it's just not very good. Uh, I was happy, though, to find this complete inbox with manual, so that was cool. So, uh, Nintendo DS port, which is just a bunch of, uh, mini-games. Congratulations. The port for, or the prize for worst port of the video game of Cars now goes to Game Boy Advance. You are now in a solid second place. Cassie. Yo. It looks like PlayStation, but... But it's a CD, listen to it. Yeah, the original PlayStation. Oh, <laughs> This was, <gasps> this was a proprietary, this isn't even a video game, this is a proprietary format developed by Sony for the PlayStation Portable, and it, they put movies on it. Oh wow. For two dollars. So if you had a PSP, you could watch open season. Well, nobody wants that. You want that. No, I don't. Look at this. It's a rack you can put your phone on while you take a sh- Anybody up for NFL Club 98 on the N64? Nobody wants that either. 
that calculator is only forty dollars. Those are usually really expensive. Yeah, look at that. that came from Blockbuster. Oh. NBA Live 2000, man. They got some Sega Genesis cards up in here, too. Doing some Animal Crossing little guys. Those are Amiibos. Obviously. You look like one. You look sad. <laughs> Okay, get up. I'm not laughing because I need. I'm not laughing to be mean. Someone just, someone just ripped one in the middle of the store, and she has the humor of a five-year-old. <laughs> On her phone, like always. You know what? I ate a pistachio earlier. I wonder if I still have oh, this thing out. So there was a dog chasing some kids on a bike. So I took his bike away. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I'm not laughing. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I said. You actually, that's very weird. Did you like the movie? Yes, I did. I mean, you already seen it the first time, but did you like it better the second time? I liked it the same, because I already liked it Honestly, a lot. Honestly, I feel the same way. I liked it a lot the first time as well. Uh, anyone who thinks it's bad, uh, you're wrong. My my opinion is clearly correct, because I have a beard and you don't, so but bam Your hair is literally all over. Yeah, well, that's what happens. Don't put it back. <laughs> We're putting it back in the root. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Oh, my hair's stuck in my I head. know yesterday I said that I was going to see her yesterday, but she had plans yesterday and didn't tell me, so. But, yeah, I still really liked Rise of Skywalker, and you saw earlier in footage... Uh, that we were at Half Price Books. I got some cool things. I might show you those when I get home or tomorrow or the next week. Who knows? It's all going to be in the same video. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a day later and I finally got to see her. So <laughs> I feel like that's like a vlog curse. Every time... I'm I, a curse? Every time I've ever mentioned that I'm going to see you in a vlog, you don't show up on that day. Well, then stop mentioning it. Maybe so I feel work. like that's a curse. You're a curse. I'm not saying you're a curse. Oh! Did you hear that he really just... That's so gross. You're disgusting. So I just got home not too long ago from work. It's about 5 o'clock right now. A little after. I got my brother and I dinner. Had McDonald's because it's good and it's cheap. Uh, anybody out there who says McDonald's is garbage, uh, I don't know what McDonald's you've been to in a while, but it's not garbage to me. I kind of like it. But I got this thing in the mail today. It's um, it's this box right here. And what this is, is called the BAM box. It's one of those like pop culture subscription boxes that you can get nerd stuff in. I thought I canceled this. Well, I did cancel this a few weeks ago. I canceled my subscription. Uh, but I think it renewed, automatically renewed before I canceled it because I think this is December's box. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it's canceled now. I'm going to have to look into that because I don't want it to charge my credit card again and lose another 30 bucks uh, because these boxes I don't really want all that much. Actually, uh, I got the autographed Bugs Bunny Pop and Darla Pop from Shazam uh, through Bambox. So they're good for one thing, I guess. Okay, so I've already cut it open and folded this part over because I don't want you to see my address. But I haven't looked at anything else inside of the box, so I'm just going to attempt to open this very awkwardly in front of the camera. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, I think this is a pop. First thing we have is this, um, yeah, this is definitely the December box because this, I think this is Harry from, it's either Harry or Marv from Home Alone. I still have not seen Home Alone, but I know the famous, you know, Harry and Marv 
duo, and one of them apparently gets hit in the head with something. So I've got a lot of pins from Bam, uh, from Bam Box now. Uh, we'll save that for last because that is the big thing. It's just packing stuff. Oh, what is this? One up, congratulations. You got a one up card. You have an upgraded or limited edition item in your box. Oh, cool. Oh, <laughs> I get what this is. It's a Nakatomi Plaza little like badge thing from Die Hard. That's kind of funny. Oh, it's Bill Murray from uh, Scrooged. You always get a little like piece of artwork in the band box itself, so that's cool. So I've got a certificate of authenticity there, so yeah, Bill Murray from Scrooged. I've never seen Scrooged, but so now this is the this is the special thing. You know what? I'm gonna close my. It's in a pop protector. I love that. I'm gonna close my eyes. What is it? Can you guys tell me? Is it upside down? It's probably upside down. Oh, it's Fireman Dumbo from Disney's Dumbo. Um, cool. I guess. Uh, the power protector's on backwards, I can see that pretty well. Oh, here's a certificate of authenticity. Uh, it says, this Dumbo Funko Pop has been hand-signed by Katie Lay, who is the only person to have voiced Dumbo. It was signed during a private signing for the Bambox pop culture and is guaranteed to be authentic. So this was signed by the voice actress who played Dumbo. So this at the bottom tells us what we have in the box. So, let's see, what's in the box? What's in the box? Yeah, this is definitely um, the December box because we've got a, you know, the Bill Murray from Scrooge and stuff. The Liberty Autograph, fan art pin. Ooh, only 99 of those made. Yeah, that's that's our special item is this pin here. Only, oh, it says it on the thing. It says only 99 made on the little uh, card there, if you can see that. It won't focus. Uh, but we could have got Macaulay Culkin, that guy. I think that's Marv. Yeah, that's Harry and that's Marv. I don't know. Correct me in the comments. I haven't seen Home Alone. Uh, it would have been cool if we got this one, but that's black and white, you know. We want full color, so that's cool. Um, movie prop. This isn't really a movie prop. It's just something that they made. It's cool, like, nice, I guess, but what am I going to use that for? And then fan art print. You could have got... We got this version here. We didn't get the only 500 version, which is still kind of cool, but... My whole issue with these boxes is the fact that, well, something like the Nakatomi Plaza badge, it's cool, but what am I going to do with it, you know? It's it's just not practical. How am I going to use this in my daily life? Trick question, I'm not going to. And like the pin, yeah, that's cool. I'll put that on my backpack maybe at some point after I've seen Home Alone. The coolest thing in it is the pop, and it's, you know, it's from something I'm not really all that into, but... It's cool, I guess, and it's an autograph pop. Maybe at some point that'll be worth something. But, like, I just went to go find this. This is something I got from another fan box a few months ago. Jurassic Park Visitor Pass. Like, this is cool, but what am I going to do with it? I mean, this just sits in my entertainment center underneath my TV. Like, yeah, see? I'm wearing it now. I'm using it. Um, but I don't hate subscription boxes. I think they're perfectly fine. Uh, one the... I almost said 1-Up Box. 1-Up Box is one of the worst you can get is from what I've seen. Uh, the BAM Box, I think, is actually kind of one of the best because you get, you know, signed Funko Pops. And if you're a pop collector like I am, getting anything autographed is pretty awesome. Those two art prints back there, uh, Batman and The Flash, were both from uh, the BAM Box. I've got a couple hanging up here. Uh, Dark Phoenix, that one's actually kind of rare. They only made 500 of those, so that's kind of cool. Uh, Thanos, and then this one here of it's Kylo Ren versus Rey, except they only made 500 of those. That's Kylo Ren versus Dark Rey, uh, which is kind of cool as well. So the art prints are honestly one of my favorite parts about it. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, though, because I'm not going to put Bill Murray on my wall because uh, I've never seen Scrooge. I'm just showing you all things, uh, various items I've got from Bambox over the last few years, or last few months. Uh, this Batman mask is signed by a lesser-known voice actor who's played Batman before, uh, Roger Craig. He's got a certificate of authenticity there. He says he's played him in numerous video games and TV shows. I have never looked up uh, what exactly he has been in, uh, but apparently he's a Batman voice actor, which is cool. 30 bucks a month, not really all that worth it, though. 
Although I just remembered, I never showed you guys what I picked up last night from Half Price Books. Uh, they got a ton of Star Wars figures in. Like new in box, uh, mint on card, three and three quarter inch figures. So I picked up a few for myself. I got General Grievous from the Saga Collection, which I believe was released around 2007, probably, I think, is when Hasbro had this packaging. And I just dropped it. <laughs> It's got a little like holographic exclusive figure there. I got a Han Solo figure from Return of the Jedi from the blue card days of Attack of the Clones, I think is when this one came out. So around like 2002 or three. And then a vintage collection Han Solo in this glorious uh, protector here, which I think is official because it's got, uh, you know, the stickers on the protector itself. But yeah, I picked up the figures because I'm not a big three and three quarter inch figure guy. I have a few, maybe I'll show them later in the vlog, but I have a few three and three quarter inch figures. When I was like 13 or 14, I started listening to Star Wars collecting uh, podcasts and I got bit by the three and three quarter inch bug. And I bought a few back in the day when the stores would actually have them on shelves uh, and the three and three quarter inch line wasn't garbage because it's kind of garbage nowadays. The six inch line is where it's at. That's primarily where I buy most of my figures now. But anyway, I picked these up because, well, Han Solo is one of my favorites. Uh, from Star Wars. I had this in my hands originally. I was just going to buy this. Then I found this guy. Uh, but I had this one in my hands and Hope was with me and I found this and I was like going back and forth. Which one do I really want? And she said, why don't you just get both? So Hope, you're an enabler of my um, addiction for these figures. And General Grievous, I just really like General Grievous. And this has cool packaging. He was probably the most expensive. I think he was four. He was two, and this one was three. I've got some other three and three quarter inch figures here that I bought off eBay a while ago. This is a combat engineer clone, and then just a regular clone, both from episode three, from the same line that General Grievous was released in. Uh, but this is probably the rarest figure I own. A mint on card. You can see it's Commander Cody. The reason he is so rare is because, one, he was a part of the last wave of Clone Wars figures to be released back in 2013, I think. So you're probably thinking, hey, man, that's probably not all that rare. 2013 wasn't all that long ago. Well, hang on a second. That last wave of Clone Wars figures never made it to the United States. It was only r released in Europe and Canada. So if you wanted these figures, like Cody here... Uh, you could only import them from either Canada or Europe. I have a Phase 2 Captain Rex somewhere that I picked up off of eBay years ago. He wasn't meant on card. He came loose, so I didn't commit heresy or anything. But I would really like to have uh, a Captain Rex to go with Commander Cody in this box art. Also picked up Horrible Bosses and Birdman. Uh, Birdman, I've heard, is fantastic. So I can't wait to watch that. Horrible Bosses, I've also heard, is pretty okay. Uh, it was like three bucks, so I decided why not just go ahead and buy it. Cool thing about Birdman is I found the version that has the opening slipcover. And, this is the coolest part, the red Blu-ray case. I just love when Blu-rays have different colors for their cases. I don't know why. It's just something fun. And I really like that I found that. Six bucks. For that which is extraordinarily cheap so i apologize for the lighting not being too great right now but uh it's a sad time because people's comments have been disappearing and youtube put out a tweet saying doomsday has arrived judgment day is here and i am just when it was announced i had a little bit of hope you know saying like well maybe it won't happen Maybe YouTube will wise up and realize that these changes are actually going to hurt their platform in the long run and hurt creators, the thing that they claim to care about, which clearly they don't give a rat's ass about us or else they wouldn't have made these changes. I'm just trying to prepare myself for when my revenue takes a huge hit. It always takes a hit this time of year because the Christmas ads go away and, you know, it kind of drops a little bit. But I'm, I'm just prepping right now for... An unknown future because Thomas content on this YouTube channel was my bread and butter and now that I'm not going to be able to have comments or likes, dislikes, even a subscribe button on those pages, I just don't know 
if making that kind of content is going to be worth it anymore. Obviously, these vlogs are fun, or else I wouldn't be doing this right now, and, you know, Home Media Reviews is, its second season is in full production. I just, man, YouTube, what the hell are you doing? Why are you not listening to us? You're not. You're clearly not listening to us. I don't care what kind of bullshit claims you're saying about how oh, if you make content for mixed audiences you can set that is not made for kids don't make us choose don't take away features from videos made for kids there is youtube kids there is that app use that i made a tweet about it earlier about how they're shooting themselves in the foot and they have this is like the 15th time they've shot themselves in the foot only this time they have a chance of dying this time YouTube has a chance to finally hurt from a change like this because they are going to lose creators. They're going to lose people. They're going to lose advertising revenue. They're going to lose everything from this. They're going to lose a lot. Maybe not everything, but they're going to lose a lot. I don't know where the future holds at this point. I'm not going to stop Thomas content or anything. If there is going to be a new physical media release here this year, I will cover it on HMR, but... It's just never going to be the same, man. And I'm sorry this vlog got so depressing. This, not even that far in. It's just YouTube. That's all I have to say is YouTube, you effed up. And I don't think you're going to be able to fix this. So I'm watching Chris Duckman's Black Friday video from like three, four years ago. Because that's what you do on a Tuesday night. You watch old Black Friday videos when you're bored. And avoiding recording YouTube videos. Um, and <laughs> I just have to show you this. He's talking about Captain Phasma here, and he calls it. I mean, he totally calls Captain Phasma's character. Listen to this. A slightly larger Captain Phasma. I'm clearly becoming a Captain Phasma collector. Watch her be, like, the worst character ever. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I don't hate Captain Phasma. I mean, I own her Black Series figure, uh, mainly because she came in a lot with a couple of other Stormtroopers, and, you know, she was just kind of like, oh, she's here too. But, I mean... She's not the best. You know, she she doesn't do... This camera's not focusing at all. She doesn't do, like, anything of importance in either Force Awakens or Last Jedi. I will say, though, her armor is really awesome. You know, that, that chrome armor on it, even though Hasbro didn't do any kind of chroming on the actual Black Series figure itself. I would have preferred to see this, like, a reflective chrome type of figure that would be amazing like that special pop that Funko did which is there's a photo of it on the screen right now wouldn't that just look great on this I think just in every vlog now I'm just gonna have a little notion of me in my closet about to record uh, YouTube videos but I'm recording the HMR tonight on this little movie a movie <laughs> a movie right here which is not a spoiler because by the time this comes out uh, you will have already seen the HMR. And I think now, I'm just going to make it a habit of recording in my robe. I mean, like, I'm wearing clothes underneath this, like, for transparency's sake. I don't want you to think I'm recording these while I'm naked or anything. Uh, I think I'm just going to make this a habit because, honestly, this robe is the best $27 I've ever spent in my life. I feel like a rich man who's not actually rich. Yeah, I, I the first two episodes and all videos since then, I have literally just recorded in this robe so i think i'm just gonna just gonna do that you know i've still got the hat i'm just gonna wear the robe guys i mean it's great also uh i moved a lot of the pop boxes up here onto this shelf you can see there's more space back here i'm running out of space i am up to i think almost 340 right now and then my black series and six inch figure boxes up there uh really need to be overhauled so i'm home now as you can see curled up in my robe i look like a burrito and i'm enjoying some fitz's ginger ale fitz's is a company in uh, st louis that makes excellent uh, pure cane sugar soda, and uh, you can have it shipped to you. It's a little bit expensive, but it was worth it. The ginger ale, I'll say, though, is not my favorite flavor. It kind of leaves a weird aftertaste. It doesn't taste as much like ale late as I would want it to. 
I think I prefer Ale Aid, honestly, to Fitz's Ginger Ale, but if Fitz's is still good, I've got their root beer and a couple of their black cherries downstairs in the fridge. Uh, but apparently yesterday, the movie Joker came out, had it on my calendar, and for some odd reason, it didn't register with my brain that the movie Joker came out on Blu-ray, and I forgot to get it. And when I got home, I just had no motivation to go out and get it, but I got it today. And... Um, I've come to the conclusion that this artwork sucks. For this front cover, I mean, this is just, it's literally just his face. I like the movie Joker. It didn't make my top ten movies of the year, and that's because I don't like it as much as other people do. I think it's a fine film. It's a nice throwback to Martin Scorsese films of the 1970s and 80s. It's not groundbreaking, though. It didn't change the game like some people are claiming that it has. I mean, I really don't see a lot of the the major praises that people have for this movie. I mean, it's good, don't get me wrong. Uh, it's just not one of my personal favorites. This scene here in The Patriot is the greatest scene in the film and possibly the most badass in the film. He, Mel Gibson just kills all these soldiers with that, with that axe. It's not showing it now, but here it goes. There he is. Yeah, kill him. Do it. Do it. Patriot's not a great movie, but this scene is just, it's masterfully done. So the other day, I learned of the existence of a new Emperor Palpatine Black Series figure, which there was an original Emperor Palpatine released, but the face sculpt didn't look very good. It didn't include, like, the throne and everything. It was just him in a really bad black robe from what I could see from photos. But yesterday, I learned of the new Emperor Palpatine, which was just released, I think either late last year or early this year. It's an Amazon exclusive and it was in stock last night. Me being an impulsionless buyer, I picked one up and uh, supposedly it's going to be here tonight, which Prime, Amazon Prime. If you don't have it, you should get it or leech off of someone who does have it. I leech off my parents. They have it, but <laughs> it's great, honestly. And I really hope it does get here tonight because I'd love to do an unboxing of it tonight and I'm super excited for it because apparently the face sculpt looks really good. It has the throne and everything. Plus after seeing Rise of Skywalker I really just want an Emperor Palpatine figure because he was amazing in that film and he's amazing in the original trilogy. So it did arrive. Yay. Ignore the clothes in the background I'm doing laundry but let's open it up shall we? Oh my gosh. Look at this thing. <laughs> This box is huge. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I'm in love. I'm in love. Just look at this thing. Oh man. Wow. Just compare this to the original Emperor Palpatine, which I'll put a, a picture here. I mean, this is just so much better. You even get like extra heads. Look at that. Angry and neutral or I guess that would be neutral actually, but damn. Okay, this is efficient. So I'm taking this thing out of his box, and look at that. The throne is actually a separate plastic piece than the emperor himself. You know, he's set up in the box. It looks like he's sitting on the throne. He's actually not. It's a separate plastic piece. That is a smart way to package this. All right, so here's a better angle looking at the figure out of the box. Man, just look at that face sculpt. It's actually good. <laughs> wow. I'm surprised. Hasbro's face sculpts have getting, have have been getting. I can't speak a lot better as of recently. And this throne, man, it is, wow, it's great. It comes with a few accessories as well. He's got his cane there. If you want to pose him walking, two hands shooting electricity, kind of a staple in the Palpatine legacy. And there are his two heads. There is it a little. Over, is it a little bit overpriced? Probably. I paid about forty for it, I believe. So, um, right now I'm just trying to avoid having buyer's remorse because I just spent $40 on an Emperor Palpatine figure. As you can see, yes, clearly I do keep all of my boxes for every six inch figure I buy, whether that be for Star Wars Black Series, which definitely a lot more Black Series in here than a Marvel Legends, but there's a couple Legends boxes in there. That's a Legends box, you know? But I'm currently trying to reorganize how I've got these set up here on the top shelf of my closet. They used to go from there 
to around here, but I removed a lot of the old boxes and VHS tapes from sitting there, put them in my basement temporarily. So now I've got to put most of that back onto this shelf and figure out a way to have it all fit. I don't think I've ever shown these on camera before, at least not their boxes. The figures are up there. I don't keep the figures in their boxes, but these are probably some of the rarest figures I own. Um, Han Solo and Stormtrooper outfits, not really that rare. Uh, his finding him with the box is not very common. Sergeant is pretty expensive on places like eBay. This was actually the first Black Series figure I ever picked up. I got him in store, surprisingly. And this one is probably the rarest figure I have. It's the original Clone Trooper in the original Red Box Black Series line uh, back when it first released. And um, I'm happy to have that. There he is, back there next to the Captain and Captain Rex. The Sergeant is back there. And Han Solo and Stormtrooper armor is right there with three other Han Solos. Also, I should probably show you this. It's the vintage carded Han Solo. Uh, there he is right there. You didn't see that earlier. These were released for the 40th anniversary of A New Hope and they're awesome because they're the vintage cards and they're sweet. Uh, kinda wish I would have bought a secondary Han Solo to open and kept one of them mint on card, but you know, it's okay. I still have the card and it's in perfect condition and I can put him back in the box whenever I want. Okay, so it's done. Chairs moved back in there. I use that to stand on. It's probably not very safe, but whatever. Uh, it's finished. Look at that. It looks much better. Kind of. Sort of. Not really. It just looks less cluttered than it did previously. It was all stacked up against that wall. And now it has room to breathe. I've got, you know, special boxes for, you know, my Luke Skywalker figure with his Octu Island and Emperor Palpatine's boxes behind the special clone trooper there. I fit pretty much everything on this shelf. There wasn't a box that I had to leave out or anything. You see I've got, you know, my legends are separated by this big ass Iron Man box here, which I don't collect a lot of legends. I figured that out when I was uh, sorting the boxes. I bought four legends in like the last year and a half or so. And I figured out that I collect the Black Series more than I do Marvel Legends, but not saying Marvel Legends is a bad line. It's not. You know, I've got the two special figures that were released last year, I think? It was either 2018 or 2019 when those figures were released. That's Iron Man Mark 7 and Ultron. Uh, and then I've got the Marvel 80 year Iron Man here, which is pretty cool. You can see I had to put my archive Black Series figures on top because they don't come in you know, boxes like these, they just come on cards, which is fine, you know, I'll keep them up there for now. But everything looks pretty good so far. I just have to figure out what I'm going to do with this stuff that was sitting on top of it. Like, this was a box my wallet came in, um, a Yoda advice thing, the box my watch came in, headphone box, those I can just throw away actually, I'm pretty sure those are broken. And look, it's my name as a puzzle. I killed Snoke. I'll kill you. My boy. I haven't even made Snoke yet. I'm from Return of the Jedi. Who even are you? Guess what, you're in it. I was not ready for this. <laughs> Help, I'm being assaulted. Please, someone, send help. <laughs> you look like a gremlin. Are you going to say anything? Normally she likes being on camera. I don't know why she's being so so mean tonight. You're mean. Okay. Oh hi. You made it to the end of this vlog. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. But now it's time for me to explain something. You'll notice in this video's title it was What I Was Doing When I Was Dead 2, Part 1. That's correct. I did not just 
forget about the months of the rest of February and March. No, those are coming in a separate video that'll probably be released around the time of when Home Media Reviews Season 2 uh, premieres, which will be sometime in April. I, I am recording this portion of this little vlog here around the middle of March, so the uh, announcement of when Home Media Reviews Season 2 is coming to air will be within the next couple of weeks. Probably by the end of March, I'd say, is when I'll firmly be committed to the date of when I want the series to premiere. So as I said, this is part one. The time of filming this part two is not complete yet. It's not even out yet. So when you get a chance, uh, hey, watch part two whenever you can, whenever I decide to release it. I'm basically just trying to end this video off with a little uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in part two and when Home Media Reviews Season 2 comes back. Good night, everybody.